um, this 4.4 4 is due Tuesday. Due uh, Wednesday. Okay. Hello, everybody. Actually, well, we don't have class Tuesday, so it's due Wednesday. Um, four three is due on Monday, so I will check that when you come into class on Monday. All right, so this lesson, 4.4, 4, trig functions of any angle. Um, this is kind of a carryover of stuff that I've already uh, alluded to, and we've, we've kind of already talked about for the last couple of classes when we were working with the unit circle. I'm going to start out, actually, by just jumping to the example, example one, and then we'll move from there um, back to fill in the chart above. So find the values of all six trig functions for an angle in standard position. What does standard position mean? So it starts on the positive x-axis, yep, with the vertex at the origin, right? So it starts in this manner, and then... We keep reading, with measure theta, so the angle is going to be called theta, if the point <coughs> with the coordinates 3, 4 lie on its terminal side. So we go and we find the point 3, 4, which is up here in quadrant 1, and that point lies on the terminal side of our angle. So the angle looks something like that, right? So the angle would be this angle inside here. We call that angle theta. Zoom in a little bit more. All right, looks like this. And our job is to find the six trig function values of that angle: sine of theta, cosine of theta, and so on and so on. All right. So what we do here is drop down a vertical from that point to the x-axis. If we do that, we've created a, tr a right triangle, and with that right triangle, we can use what? You can use Sokotoa to find the six trig functions, right? Sokotoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and so on and so on. So, um, uh, well, is it? <clears throat> so sine of theta would have to be the opposite measurement. This has a pointer. So the opposite measurement divided by the, I'm oh, sorry, the hypotenuse, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have any of those measures labeled, so let's do that. What are the measures of the sides of this triangle? Adjacent, three. adjacent has to be three. And opposite is four. Vertical has to be four. Five. And the hypotenuse must be five, because it's a Pythagorean triple. All right, well, that makes it easy enough to work with. Simple three, four, five. If we didn't know that this was a Pythagorean triple, we could calculate the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem, right? So sine theta must be what? Four over five. And cosine theta, three over five, adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent theta, what's tangent? Four thirds, opposite over adjacent. All right, and of course, this it asks for all six. So the inverse, or sorry, the reciprocal of each of these, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, and that gives us five fourths. The reciprocal of cosine is secant, gives us five thirds, and the reciprocal of tangent is cotan, which gives us three fourths. All right. So the concept here that needs to be considered is the fact that we are no longer on the unit circle. This point 3, 4 lies way outside of the unit circle. Right? The unit circle would be a circle right in this area with a, unit or a radius of just one. It would have to be right in here. That's all. Our circle includes the point 3, 4. So it must be, if you look at the uh, hypotenuse, it's got radius 5, so it must be a circle way out here. Kind of messed up that edge, but that's okay. All right? 
So what we're, just, we're saying here is that the, the Sokotoa formula, or this, this idea of sine equals opposite of hypotenuse and so on and so on, works for any circle, any triangle inscribed in a circle, as long as that triangle is a right triangle. All right? Um, and so that's why the title of the section was trig functions of any angle instead of just angles off the unit circle. All right, theta is, is clearly not on the unit circle in this problem because our circle is not the unit circle. All right, so backing up here, it says let theta be an angle in standard position with point P, X, Y on its terminal side, and R, of course, is equal to Pythagorean theorem, square root of X squared plus Y squared. Um, of course, R can never be zero. I go a step further and say that R will always be positive. We're never going to be dealing with a negative number. R is always, I'm going to put plus, all right, which of course means greater than zero, positive. <coughs> so the trig function values are y over r, x over r, y over x, and then of course the reciprocals, r over y, r over x, x over y. So as long as I have x, y, and r, I can find all the trig function values for any point on a graph, right? any, for any angle that intersects a point on the graph. It's probably a better way to say it. So let's go do another one. Or two says, find the values of all six trig functions of an angle in standard position with measure theta if the point with the coordinates negative 5, 12 lies on the terminal side. This time we're going to put a point all the way up here in the corner at negative 5, 12. And our angle starts, again, positive x-axis here, and then goes through a line that intersects the point, negative 5, 12. So there's our angle theta. So in order to find the six trig function values of theta, I have to get a little creative here. <clears throat> Most of students who will make a mistake at this point will make a mistake by drawing um, a triangle. Don't do this. They will draw a triangle that does this. And uses the y-axis as the base of the triangle, right? You see this? Mm -hmm. Don't do that. <laughs> Our triangle will always be drawn with the positive x-axis. I'm sorry, with the x-axis, not positive x-axis, but with the x-axis. Come on, wake up, there we go. So we're going to drop a vertical or, or uh, draw a vertical line to connect to the x-axis always. And this is the triangle we need to consider. All right, so there's concept issue number one. We need to make sure we know how to draw that triangle so that we can apply Sokotoa. If we don't have a right triangle, then our Sokotoa rule doesn't apply. <clears throat> All right, once we have that, though, there's another question. If you're thinking about this conceptually, there's another question that should arise at this point. Theta is where? It's outside of the triangle. Theta is not inside this triangle. So how are we going to find sine, cosine, tangent of theta and secant, cosine, cotangent if our theta is not even in the right triangle? So this is the big conceptual leap. I need you to pay attention to this discussion for a second. We use what we call the reference angle, theta sub r. The little r is just a subscript identifying it as the reference angle. Theta sub r will yield, will give us the same trig function values as theta, except possibly for a negative. So the number will be the same, but theta sub r gives all positive values, 
but theta might have some negative trig function values. All right? So simple idea, just you can take it upon faith. It is true, I'm telling you, that theta sub r will yield the same numbers in the trig functions, so sine, cosine, tangent of theta sub r, are equal to sine of theta. It would be as if you use sine of theta, except a few of them are going to be negative. In this case, sine of, sine of theta sub r is actually equal to sine of theta. They're the same number. There's not a negative issue. When will it be different? You tell me. Which functions do you think in quadrant two should be negative? Cosine. Why? Because x. Is because x is negative in quadrant two, right? And tangent? Zero. Because it's y divided by x. Yeah. And then, of course, any, basically anything that has x in it, right? But sine and which other one? Uh, cotangent. No, no, cotangent, cosecant. Cosecant. Sine and cosecant, right, are just y and r. They don't use x. So sine and cosecant are going to be positive here. But the other four will be negative. Now, again, that's a conceptual thing. You just got to remember which quadrant am I in? Which one of these should be positive? Which one of these should be negative? When we finish with our, our trig function, that's one way to do it. Or you can just go, well, when I label my triangle... I'm going to put the negative on the side measurement. If I label this triangle, then this side over uh, uh, down at the bottom here, this side here is negative 5, right? If I put a negative 5 on that side, then when I find my trig function values, I'm going to be using that negative 5. This is 12. And what is our hypotenuse? Yeah, using the Pythagorean theorem, 12 squared plus uh, negative 5 squared is equal to 13. It is a Pythagorean triple. So when we're labeling, <clears> we're just, like, when we're like sign. Yeah, I'd put negative 5 there. No, no, not the triangle at all. So it's how we're like finding the different like, values. Do you want us to put sine theta like r? Just, like, no, 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 sine theta. Because it wants us to find the six trig function values of theta, okay. not theta sub r. Uh, the only reason I'm even bringing theta sub r into the discussion is because, you know, again, if you, if you get to thinking about this conceptually, you go, wait a minute, my theta is not in that right triangle. How does that work? Right? It, it, it's, it's a big question mark. All right? So the property here is that theta sub r yields the same values except for what we call the polarity, the plus or minus. All right? So sine of theta is actually opposite 12 over a, a hypotenuse, which is 13 in this case. But cosine is adjacent, which is negative 5 over hypotenuse 13. And tangent, yeah, that's it. And tangent is opposite 12 over um, adjacent negative 5. Cosecant. Reciprocal, 13 over 12. Secant, reciprocal, 13 over negative 5. You can put the negative in the top if you really want, but it's not necessary. And then cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, negative 5 twelfths. All right? So there are six trig function values. Again, as long as you have x, y, and r, and as long as you have the correct sign, by sign I mean S-I-G-N, the positive or negative, as long as you have the correct sign on them, you should be able to come up with these ratios. Any questions on that? All right. Wait, hold on. I can just go up there. Yep. Okay, so this is really just kind of a discussion to review and remind us of which functions are positive and negative in which quadrants. We did this with our discussion on... Uh, the unit circle already, so this should be a real quick conversation. In quadrant one, both x and y are positive, and so all of the trig functions are positive in this quadrant. In quadrant two, the x is negative, but the y is positive, and so anything that uses x will be negative, but anything that uses just y, remember, r is always positive, so r is not going to have an effect on the positive and negative. But if it, just, if it uses y, then it's going to be positive, which is sine 
and we said cosecant. Sorry, yeah, cosecant. My fault. Cosecant. <clears throat> In quadrant three, both x and y are negative. So if it uses only x, it's going to be negative. If it uses only y, it's going to be negative. But if it uses the ratio of both x and y, it's positive, which is which functions use x and y, the ratio of x and y. Tangent and cotangent. And then in quadrant four, x is positive, but the y is negative. So if it uses only x, it's positive. But if it uses a y, it's going to be negative. Which one is positive here? <coughs> Which ones? Cosine and What's the reciprocal of cosine? Secant. All right, again, we had mentioned this the other day. So that um, analogy we used, or the little acronym, not analogy, was C-A-S-T, right? I didn't like it because we're starting in quadrant four and going around instead of starting in quadrant one. You start in quadrant one, it's ast, ast more like that, A-S-T, C. Um, but if you start in quadrant four, then cosine is positive, and it's reciprocal, secant, and so on, all the way around. All right? So just a little, little reminder. This is what's to determine the signs of the tangent functions in each. <clears throat> all right? Yeah. Go ahead. Quadrant one. I'm saying all trig functions are positive in that quadrant. So, so in quadrant one, all six trig functions are positive. If the angle is in quadrant one, then all six trig functions are positive. If the angle ends in, or is in quadrant two, then the only trig functions that are positive are sine and cosecant. Oh, okay. right. So let's get a little tougher here. This says, given that tangent of an angle theta, we don't know what angle theta is, it says given that tangent is equal to negative 5 fourths, before I even go any further, tangent is equal to what? Uh, opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So on our uh, diagram at the very beginning, we said, Instead of opposite over adjacent, we use which values? Tangent is equal to, I'll scroll back to the beginning. There we go. Tangent is equal to, tangent is equal to y over x. So if we are told that tangent is negative 5 fourths, then one of those numbers must be. <coughs> Come on. Which one of these, or what, what are we saying here? One of these numbers must be what? Negative. Okay, one of them must be negative. True. But one of them has to represent which value? Uh, and the other one must represent? Y. Why? Five must be? Y. And four must be? Uh, uh. X. Uh, your, your response makes it sound like, well, duh, we should know this. But I don't think everybody does. I really don't. Tangent, whoops, sorry. I'm still on the, uh, there we go. So tangent of theta equals negative 5 fourths. We don't know where that negative goes, but we know that negative 5 fourths is supposed to be equal to y over x here. So one of those must be y. Y is 5, but we're not sure if it should be positive or negative. And X is 4, but we're not sure if it should be positive or negative. One of them is going to be a negative. We don't know, but we know it's 5, we know it's 4. So we read on. The next statement says cosine is positive. What does that mean? That X is positive. That X is positive. Very good. If cosine is positive, then x must be greater than 0. x must be positive. 
you know, I'm, I'm probably taking for granted the fact that it says cosines greater than zero. That means positive, right? Cosine greater than zero. It doesn't say cosine is positive. I said that. The notes say cosine is greater than zero. You have to interpret that. Yes? So it has to be in quadrant four? Has to be quadrant four. <clears throat> and if it's in quadrant four, then that minus has to go on the five, right? So we know five, the y value is negative. All right, so once we know that, we can actually graph this thing. Let's put it out um, negative five on the y and positive four on the x. That's down over here. So the triangle that we're going to use, oops, that didn't work. It's this triangle, right? With a, an x value of positive 4, a y value of negative 5, and be careful here. What is the hypotenuse? Three, negative three. Six. Mm. Your hypotenuse can never be smaller than any of the other sides. Six. 4, 5, 6 is not a Pythagorean triple. Seven. Three, ten. You have to calculate it. That's the point I'm trying to make. Nine. You can't just assume that it's going to be a Pythagorean triple. So this is the square root of 4 squared plus Six. negative 5 squared. <laughs> it's square root 41, people. Square root 41. You're supposed to be able to calculate it. 16 plus 25 is 41. It's a prime number, so you're not going to break it down. Our problem has a weird number in it. Don't be afraid of that. Square root 41, that's our... So this is just short of 7, right? Because square root 49 would be 7. Yes. Uh -huh. It has to be bigger than these two sides because it's the hypotenuse. Oh, yeah. All right, so what table. value is that? Oh, heck yeah. 41. Okay, so what does that represent, though? Hypotenuse. Which we call... <laughs> Come on, in our notes, what we call the hypotenuse? R. So r is square root 41. If we have x, y, and r, we can find any trig function they ask for. In this case, they are asking for sine and secant. Yes? So it's OK if like, the, the, one of the like, sides is like, negative? Yes. It's like longer than the shorter side. Yes, we're, think of the negative as a direction more than a, more than a measurement value. Okay. All right? And we do this all the time in calculus. We talk about um, speed is a positive value, but velocity is a directed rate of change. So it's a directed. So you can have a negative velocity, but you can't have a negative speed. Do you calculus better? Do I? I? I appreciate calculus better, of course, because it's applied pre-cal. I want to see the math in action. I don't want to just learn the math. All right? So sine, now that we have x, y, and r, sine must be negative 5 over square root 41. And we have to rationalize that. So negative 5 square root 41 over 41. That's it. This color is really <laughs> difficult, isn't it? <clears throat> I'll choose a better color for the next one. All right, secant is what? Square root 41 over 4. There we go. It's the reciprocal of cosine, where cosine is x over r. Secant's going to be r over x. And then we don't have to rationalize that one. That one's done. Is 41 a prime number? Yes. All right. We'll stop there. We'll hold off on this next one for Monday. <laughs> so quadrant two, the angle 135, puts us at, on the unit circle, which, which point is that? Negative. What are the coordinates? Negative square root over square root two over two. And? Square root 
positive square root 2 over 2. What's, what is sine reference at? The x coordinate or the y coordinate? The y. The y. So what's our answer? Square root, positive square root. Square root 2 over 2. That's it. So it's just like So sine, <laughs> sine represents the y coordinate, right? So we're just like matching these to the Yeah. Um, and so because it says without a calculator, that's kind of your dead giveaway that this has to be, these, these angles have to be uh, coterminal with our known unit circle angles. The 16 points around the unit circle we've asked you to memorize. All right, so where is negative 210 put us on the unit circle? Would that be at like 90? So negative, negative 180 would put us... Here, right, at 180 degrees, same position as 180. And then, right, we're going clockwise, and then we have to go another 30 degrees, right? So it's the same as which angle? Somebody said it. 150. So it's out here, the same as 150 degree angle. 150 degrees and negative 210 degrees are coterminal with each other. So we need the coordinates of that point, which, what does tangent represent? Sine over, sine. sine over cosine or y over x, right? So what's the y coordinate there? Y is one half, and the x coordinate? Negative root three over two. Does anybody know how that simplifies? Negative root three over three. Good. And so that's our answer. All right. Cosine 4 pi over 3. Well, 4 pi over 3 is, is one of our known angles. That puts us in quadrant 3. And cosine references which angle? I'm sorry, which, uh, which coordinate? X. The x coordinate. So we want the x coordinate at 4 pi over 3. That's what this question is asking. What is the x coordinate at 4 pi over 3? It should be negative, right? Negative a half. That's it. 11 pi over 4. This one's a little trickier. <coughs> Excuse me. So all the way around the circle is how many pi over 4s? 8, right? So if we go all the way around the circle, we've gone 8 pi over 4. Because 8 over 4 is what? 2, 2 pi, right? So that's 8 of them. We need how many more? 3 more. So 1 pi over 4 would be quarter, um, uh, or I should say would be 1 half of our quadrant. That's, that would be 9 pi over 4. 10 pi over 4 would put us up at the same as pi over 2. And 11 pi over 4 ends us here in quadrant 2, right? So 11 pi over 4 is really equal to 3 pi over 4, or I should say coterminal to 3 pi over 4, right? It ends in the same spot. So what is the cosecant of 11 pi over 4? Cosecant is 1 over what? Sine. sine. So this is the same as 1 over sine 11 pi over 4, or in other words, the reciprocal of the y coordinate. What is the y coordinate at that point? root 2 over 2, and so the reciprocal would be 2 over root 2. Does anybody know how that simplifies when we rationalize it? Yeah, so we multiply it by root 2 over 2. I'll do it. Root 2 over 2 over root, uh, sorry, root 2 over 2 times 2 on the top, and then root 2 over, oh, Sorry, square root of 2 times 2 on the top, and then square root of 2 times square root of 2 on the bottom gives us 2, and the 2's cancel, and we're just left with root 2. My handwriting's definitely messier on this, dot, this app. All right, sine pi over 2. That might be the easiest one on the page. Anybody give a guess? Okay, pi over 2 is 90 degrees, so what's the sine? 1, right? Just the y coordinate at 90 degrees. And then sine of pi. So pi puts us here, right? 
and we need the y coordinate, which of course is zero. <clears throat> All right. Cosine of pi. Yep, so the x coordinate at pi is negative one. And then cosine three pi over two. Three pi over two puts us at the same position as 270 degrees, right? Same angle. So the x coordinate is zero. Good. So that's all they were asking for there. A, B, C in the next group, it's pretty clear that since they're telling you with a calculator, that you're supposed to get what kind of, an of answers for those? Decimals. Decimals, yeah. There's, there's no way for you to know these values because they are not one of our 16 points. So essentially what we're saying here is that if it's not one of those 16 points off of the unit circle that we've asked you to memorize the values for, you're going to be given a calculator for it, all right? And you'll help plug it into the calculator appropriately, making sure that for A and B, or for A, I'm sorry, for A, you are what? Um, in degrees. And then for B and C, you're going to have to use radians. All right, these two are both radians. So change the mode appropriately. If it doesn't have a degree symbol, it's a radian. All right? I'm, I'm pretty confident you guys can plug numbers into a calculator, push some buttons. So I'm going to move on. All right? Oh, good point. Thank you for bringing that up. So cotangent, I didn't even realize that was not a sine cosine tangent. So if it's sine cosine tangent, it's just a matter of pressing buttons, no big deal. How do we deal with the cotan? Anybody? Yeah. So we're not going to type in tan of 1 over 410. That's a common mistake. So I'll write this down. Don't do this. We're not going to do tan of 1 over 410. All right? That is wrong. Do not do that. Instead, it is it is the reciprocal of the entire function. It's 1 over tan 410. So the 410 goes inside the tan in parentheses. It looks something like that in your calculator, I guess. All right. And then sine is easy enough. Secant is going to be what? 1 over cosine pi over 9. All right? You're not going to take the reciprocal of the angle, really, ever. At no point will we flip the angle over. Please ignore the uh, flip over. I, I actually discussed that the other day. That's why this is up here. If I was going to flip over 2, it would look like that. So the correct terminology would, would be, I'm not going to take the reciprocal of the angle. I'm not going to put the 9 on top of the pi, ever. I'm going to literally take the reciprocal of the entire trig function. All right, and so if you understood the discussion we just had in A through H for, number, for these problems here, then the conversation in 1 through 8 for these is really quite basic. We're just flipping our logic around. Instead of trying to evaluate sine of some given angle, our job is to find the angle where sine equals that value. The only problem is there are infinite answers for every one of these problems. There really are. Why is that? Can you find multiple places where, where sine is equal to square root of 3 over 2? Give me one of them. <clears throat> Okay, so if theta is 120 degrees, which, by the way, is the same as, um, well, sine also equals square root of 3 over 2 at 60 degrees. You're right. But this says radians and degrees. So 120, we've written these kind of in, in um, opposite order uh, chronologically, but that's okay. So 120 is the same as 2 pi over 3, right? And 60 is the same as 1 pi over 3. So these are the exact same angles. 120, 2 pi over 3, 60 pi over 3, same angles. 
But the question again is, are there any others? Could you give me another angle where sine equals positive root 3 over 2, not negative? Beautiful rotation. Yeah, you can go all the way around the circle again, right? So all the way around the circle, let's say, would be 6 pi over 3. Is 7 pi over 3 also root 3 over 2 in sine? Yes. Sine of 7 pi over 3? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, in this, it's coterminal with pi over 3. And I could go all the way around again, right? I could go 13 pi over 3. 13 pi over 3 also gives me a sine equal to root 3 over 2. So the problem with this is it says solve each equation, and it doesn't really tell us where to end. It doesn't say how to, uh, how to narrow down our answers, since we have literally infinite possibilities. You can just keep going around the circle in either direction. You could go negative. Right? We could go negative 5 pi over 3, and that puts us in the same position as this pi over 3. Negative pi, uh, 5 pi over 3 is equal to positive pi over 3 when it comes to the sine value, right? Um, so you, you either need some way to represent all of the answers, or you need something to tell you to narrow down your answers. And so I would argue that, since we haven't talked about it yet um, in any of our other notes, that this should really say um, theta between 0 and 2 pi. In other words, we only want answers that are within one loop of the circle. 0 and 2 pi is one loop of the circle, right? So I'm going to hold it at that, because otherwise this discussion can get a lot, lot deeper, and I, I don't want to do that. All right? We're going to say all of our answers are going to be between 0 and 2 pi right now. Is everybody comfortable with that? All right, so tell me where cosine is equal to negative root 2 over 2. 135 degrees, which is in quadrant 2, right? And then also 225 degrees, which is in quadrant 3. And in radians, and 5 pi over 4. Again, for those who are not quite seeing this, what we're saying is that our angles that put us Um, at a cosine value of negative root 2 over 2 is this angle. This first one I've drawn here is 135 or 3 pi over 4. And then that green one, probably hard to see, which is 5 pi over 4. All right, we always start on a positive x-axis and go around. Any questions for that? So your job is for every one of these to just go around the circle and find the x or y coordinate. And they can get a little trickier, although none of these are. They're all sine, cosine, tangent. If they had asked for a secant or a cosecant or a cotangent, you'd have a little more work to do. All right? So you want to race through the rest of these? Sine equal to negative 1 half. What do you get? Where is the y coordinate equal to negative 1 half? at 210 degrees, which is quadrant 3, and 330 degrees, which is quadrant 4, which, of course, in radians is um, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, right? So for, if, for this on the unit circle, could we just draw a, like a point? Absolutely. Just use the symmetry to go straight across the circle to the other point. Yep. Now, where is sine equal to negative 1? There's only one point where that happens. So at theta equal to 270, or in radians, 3 pi over 2, right? Cosine equal to root 3 over 2. It's got to be... Cosine is positive only in, root, in quadrants 1 and 4, so it's got to be angles from those two quadrants, right? So in quadrant 1, theta, uh, cosine equals root 3 over 2 at which angle? 45. Root 3 over 2? 45. That's at 30 degrees, right? Think of your circle here. Cosine is the x-coordinate. 
right? So it's going to be there, and it's not a great circle, but and there. So it's at 30 degrees and 330 degrees, which, of course, gives us pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6 <clears throat> in radian value. A little trickier with tangent. What do you have to do for tan? You can't just look right at the uh, at the angle and or sorry at the point and and pull off that coordinate. You have to actually do a little math for tangent, which is what. Sine divided by cosine. Yeah, the, or y over x, right? So take the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. So where could you possibly get a y coordinate divided by an x coordinate equal to one or negative one? Okay, 135, you're going to get negative 1, and then also at 315. 315, why? Why at those two points? Because one of the numbers is negative and the other one's positive. But they're, they're the same. same number, right? When you're dividing the same number, root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, you get 1. And in quadrant 2 and in quadrant 4, you're going to get negative 1 for those values. So... At theta equal to 135 and 315, which in radians was 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Very good. All right, then it's a little trickier with the last one. Root 2, um, root, sorry, 1 half and root 3 over 2 is the only combination of values that when divided are going to give you a root 3 left over or a root 3 over 3 left over. In other words, we have to get a root 3. You're not going to be using the root 2 over 2 numbers in order to get a root 3, right? If you think about the fact that you're dividing y over x, the only way you can get an answer that ends with root 3 in it is if you're dividing one of the numbers that has a root 3 in it. Does that make sense? So we're talking about either a 30-degree angle or a 60-degree angle. One of those multiples, or I should say a pi over 6 or a pi over 3. All right? So which one is it that gives us root 3 when we're done? 60. So at 60, what am I dividing? Root 3 over 2 is the y coordinate divided by a half as the x coordinate. And sure enough, I'm left with root 3. Sorry, that should not be. Um, theta equals, that was wrong. So at 60 degrees, we get root 3 over 2 over a half, which equals root 3. And it works at 240. It also works at 240, yep, in quadrant um, 3. And then in radians, of course, we'd list that as pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. All right. Again, sorry for the terrible handwriting here. I'm not used to this app. I have the uh, Notability app set on calligraphy, so it comes out prettier no matter how I draw. <clears throat> and then tangent equal to negative root 3 over 3. Well, if the 60-degree angles were giving us root 3, then probably the 30-degree angles are going to give us root 3 over 3. Um, so let's, uh, let's play with that for a second. If I divide 1 half over root 3 over 3, I'm sorry, um, root 3 over 2, not root 3 over 3. If I divide this way, then I'm going to get 1 over root 3, which when rationalized gives me root 3 over 3. All right, so the 1 half has to be our y, and the uh, root 3 over 2 has to be our x. So which coordinate gives us that? And remember, we have to have a negative in one place. So 1, try that again. Can't be 135. 150, I'll take that, and 330. 330, I'll, I'll draw it real quick. So at 150, right there, the y coordinate is positive 1 half, the x coordinate is negative, and then over here, the y coordinate is negative a half, but the x coordinate is positive root three over two. All right, and then degree or in radians, that is 
um, 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 again. All right. There you go. Um, that should take you through the rest of the notes, right? Yes. 